Hi, Lee Ellis here with another segment of Leading with Honor Coaching. This month we're going to talk about situational awareness, think or die. You know, recently I was invited to go back to the Air University to the Air Command Staff College for the Gathering of Eagles. It's a real honor to be invited to that. So we have a host officer, those of us who are invited back, we have a host officer from the current class, and mine was Major Matt Kinkle, otherwise known as SWAT. He's an F-16 pilot, a wild weasel guy. You know, wild weasel. What is that? Well, they sniff out the enemy surface air missiles and knock them out. In the old days of Vietnam, when I flew, that was a two-place, two-person two job in the airplane. One person flying the airplane, the other one running the radar on all the electronic systems to sniff out those uh, enemy missiles and help knock them out. But now it's in the F-16 with one person. And I said, Matt, how can one person do all that? What, what's, what else is going on in the cockpit? He said, well, I've got three screens. I've got one for the, the enemy threat, watching that, one for the good guys, so I can see the, our team and the other and the bad guys, and then one about the radar for running the airplane and flying through the weather and all that. Plus, he's flying the airplane, of course, at about nine miles a minute, eight, eight miles a minute, which would be 480 knots. That's about 700 feet per second, and lots of times he's at low altitude incredible situational awareness. I can't even imagine, you know, it's like playing an organ with hands and feet and everything else going on with threats all around you. So situational awareness in the, in the military has always been very important because as they taught us in the old days when I was on the faculty at Squadron Officer School, our motto was think or die. And you, if you're not aware, you not know what to think about, then things happen around you that uh, are not good. So as a leader, you want to have situational awareness. Now, I sometimes have it, sometimes I don't. I always try to work harder to get it. But as a coach, that really is demanding of me to have situational awareness when I'm coaching leader or leading a team or uh, doing some uh, facilitation for a team or a board of directors or whatever. Situational awareness. I was coaching this one guy who was kind of an up-and-coming leader. He was a VP in a division of a Fortune 200 company. And he didn't have good situational awareness and good self-discipline in the staff meetings. He was very effective in his job. In the staff meetings, though, he jumped onto every issue that came up, had something to say about it, and quite often was contrarian in his uh, approach to his boss in the staff meeting and got really would just get the staff off track and take the energy out of the room. So I was coaching him on this, and he understood it, but it was just hard to hold back. So he started working on it. And one day, out of the blue, I get a phone call, and he's on the other end of the line. I call him Tom. Tom said, hey, guess what? He said, after the staff meeting today, some of my peers came up to me and said, so, Tom, are you sick? He said, no, I'm not sick. Why? He said, because in the staff meeting today, you controlled yourself, you were quiet, and uh, we didn't get pulled off into any, uh, any battles that we didn't need to be into. He was so proud of himself for being situationally aware and then being able to coach himself to handle that situation. And that's really what it's all about. Situational awareness is about being proactive to be aware of what's going on around you. Picking up the inputs, just like that F-16 pilot. What's the enemy doing? What are the good guys doing? What's the situation in my airplane? What's the weather? All of that stuff's going on and he has got to be completely aware. Nowadays, she's got to be aware too of what's going on around all the time in every direction. It's not easy. It takes a lot of attention. It takes being proactive. So being aware of that is very important. Now, it's also important to know yourself because you know where you're liable to get in trouble in your situational awareness. One of the ways that I get in trouble sometimes is I start telling a story that's probably not appropriate for the situation or go in too much depth and so I have to learn to coach myself and sometimes I let it go too far. You've seen people who are very situational aware in a meeting. They start talking about something and they say, oh, but that's not relevant here. We'll talk about that at another time. That's great situational awareness and that's what we want to have. So knowing that situation that's going on around you, knowing your own tendencies to not be aware or to jump on things that maybe shouldn't be appropriate for the situation or shouldn't be brought up in the situation. They might be important, but maybe they should be dealt with at another time. I'll just kind of close with an example out of that famous guy, Dale Carnegie, who wrote the book about how to win friends and influence people. 
He tells the story of being in London and going to the symphony with a friend. They went to dinner with another guy who, whom he met that evening. And they ha were having a discussion and they were talking about something from Shakespeare. And uh, there was a kind of an argument between Dale Carnegie and the guy that was with them that he didn't know very well about where, which play it was from and which act and so on. And Dale Carnegie pushed back and says, well, no, that's not right. It was really from here. And when he did that, his friend kicked him under the table and he shut up. He realized he maybe he should shut up. And afterwards, Dale said to him, said, well, you know I was right. He said, well, sure you're right, but we're just out having dinner and going to the symphony. It wasn't worth it for you to be right. We, we were in a social situation. We weren't in combat here. And so he said, I really learned a lesson that just because I was right doesn't mean it was a good time to have a discussion and an argument with a guy to prove I was right. That's situational awareness, and that's what we want to have, is knowing when to step forward, when to hold back, when to engage, when not to engage, and being able to coach ourselves so that we're actually thinking and not dying in those situations. Not a literal death, could be in combat, that's why it's so important in the military. But day to day, leaders need to have that situational awareness of what's going on around them, what's going on inside them, what's going on with others, and what is the next step, the next best step to take. That's not exactly science. This is more of an art. Having that intuition about what's happening here, what's happening in me, and then coming up with the right decision and following through. So I want to challenge you to think about how can situational awareness be more helpful to you? How can you grow as a person and as a leader in every situation by being more aware of what's going on around you, reading the situation, and then acting appropriately? I think you'll see it works. Good luck.